Hello. If you use different names as an author, if you have perhaps your own name and a couple of pen names, it can get a bit confusing and it's quite difficult sometimes to remember everything. So you've got lots of different logons and passwords for different sites. And when you use multiple names, you can't use your Facebook account for everyone for logging in. So it can get a bit technical and a bit tricky to remember. So we're going to look at some techniques for managing multiple pen names. First of all, let's have a look at why you might want different names. Personally, I do write in different genres and I like to keep things separate so that I don't confuse my readers. Now, I do have a transparency about that. I tell people what my different names are. You might not want to. You might want to keep your identity a secret. You might be writing real stuff where you don't want people concerned to recognize themselves and to know who you are. You may have a real name similar to another author, so you might want to change that so that there's no confusion there. And there are instances of novelists who use the name of one of their main characters and write the book as if, as if it was an autobiography, which is a terrific idea. And we're following in some very good footsteps. Lots of authors have used pen names, notably C.S. Lewis, who wrote poetry as Clive Hamilton when he was a professor at Oxford. He did use another name as well. George Orwell is, is a famous one. He, he was actually Eric Blair. George Eliot was Mary Ann Evans and she, because she was a woman and women didn't write books successfully in those days, she used a male name. J.K. Rowling, as most people know, has been exposed as Robert Galbraith because she wanted to step out from under the success of the Harry Potter novels and just see if she could do it under another name. And she really has. So let's look at how to manage pen names. Now we know everything in digital publishing is so fast moving and we need to remain current and remain visible. We want to be found. Y you may have written the most fantastic book in the last decade, but unless people find it, it's not going to be successful. And that means putting yourself out there, having a presence wherever you can. And it's a good idea, even if you don't intend to do social media, you, you probably really need to actually, but if you don't want to, just claim your name or your names on the big sites so that you have a presence there even if you're not going to do anything with it you will have something with perhaps your photo on perhaps a link to a website or a blog or wherever else you're going to be and people will be able to find you from that it's really good for SEO so if you do have a website that you want to be found so if you're linking to that website from places like LinkedIn Google Plus they're biggies for being found that's inbound links coming to your website, which makes Google and the other search engines recognize it as being a good, valid site, and it will appear higher in the rankings when people search for you. You might also want to be on the book cataloging sites, Goodreads, Shofari, Library thing. There are others. They're the big three, though. So that's a good place to be. And if you're going to do that and you're using multiple pen names, you could very easily get very muddled. So let's have a look at what we can do. We're going to look at techniques and tools, software and apps and things, and some tips as well. Let's look at techniques first. And the first thing to do is to create accounts on the big social media sites, as I said earlier, and the book cataloging sites for each one of your pen names so that you've got that presence there. And then do what you can to automate those as much as possible so that you can have things feeding some sites when you post on one of them and it will feed others. It's a great way of not spreading yourself too thin. It's a, a good way, a good thing to focus on one or two sites, possibly for each different name you could focus on different ones for each name and then have them feed other ones so that you're really expanding your reach. So you might decide to focus on different things with each pen name depending on your genre and what you're trying to achieve, the, the audience that you're trying to reach. So you might want to use social media on each of them, you might want to use book cataloging cataloging sites on each of them and obviously you would have an Amazon profile or wherever you're selling your books. So you might focus on reviewing under one pen name. You might focus on putting yourself out there on blogs. So approaching blogs and asking if you can do a guest blog article. You might have a podcast under another name or some other, maybe you'll run webinars and 
other types of things. So if you could decide what where your target audience are hanging out, you can then decide how you can reach them. You could use your own photo, which is a good idea, and certainly for LinkedIn you would want to do that. Or you might decide to use a stock image. I do know authors who do that. I'm not sure I would want to do that myself. What I tend to do is have photos of myself but taken in different environments. Cartoons aren't recommended for business use. There was a trend a couple of years ago now for businesses to use cartoons but that's passed, that era has passed so it's not a great idea at the moment. It can make you look a bit dated. Now Goodreads is, is a great place to hang out as an author, really, really powerful website for both authors and readers. It's a great place to meet your readers, a great place to reach people who might not otherwise have found you by looking on Amazon or elsewhere. And Goodreads, Goodreads is wonderful because you can feed each Goodreads account that you have, and you can have multiple accounts under multiple names, you can feed those from separate blogs. So if you happen to have three pen names and three blogs, you can link them to all your Goodreads accounts so that every time you write a blog, it will feed your Goodreads account and you don't have to go there so often. So that's pretty cool. Now you can connect one of your Goodreads accounts to your Facebook profile. Maybe you would want to connect another one to your Twitter account and you could connect another one to a different Twitter account Another idea is to take advantage of the multiple types of widgets that Goodreads make available free of charge. Really, really useful. So it's a great way of pulling in people from different areas. Facebook is good. You can use profiles and pages to reach people. Now you can only have one Facebook account, so therefore one profile. It's really not a good idea to, to open Facebook accounts under your different pen names because Facebook terms of service say that you can only have one account and you could argue in court perhaps that you, different pen names require different accounts but I think it would cost a lot of money. It's probably safer to stick to one under your real name if, if, you, if you use that and then have pages for your other pen names. Facebook is good because like Twitter you can schedule posts in advance so you don't have to spend too long. You can schedule a few on a Monday and have them going out over the week and as I mentioned earlier you, you can link your Goodreads account with your Facebook profile not with the different pages so you can only do that with one of your pen names. Twitter is good because they do allow you to have multiple accounts so you could have a Twitter account for each of your pen names so that's handy and you could then link those to the different Goodreads account accounts if that's what you want to do. Scheduling tweets in advance is a really great way to save time as, a, as on Facebook but be very very careful. If a major news story breaks sometimes there's some terrible tragedy that's happened and celebrities get into trouble because they're still tweeting about trivia. This is because they've or their PR agencies have scheduled the posts in advance. So if a major news story happens especially a tragedy go into whatever you use to schedule your tweets and stop them and you can restart them when things have calmed down. So now let's have a look at a few tools. This is the exciting stuff for techie people. If you're not technical, don't worry because they're not complicated things. KeePass is a fantastic piece of software that I've just been introduced to recently. Very, very useful. Free software and it manages your passwords and it's safe. It doesn't show them. So if someone was to get into your account, there isn't a list of passwords. They are X'd out, starred out but you can copy and paste them when you go to the accounts. You have a master password for KeePass and you can make that quite complicated so that people couldn't guess, so it's even more safe. So what I've done is set up a group in KeePass for each of my pen names and then I set up under each group the different things that I use with that pen name. So I have my Amazon author profile and on my different social media accounts, my different book cataloging accounts and any other sites that I go to. So I have blogs and different things for each of the different pen names. So it makes going to them very easy. You just click on it and it will open that URL. And then if you can't remember your username, you can copy and paste that in and you can copy and paste your password in. And it, this has revolutionized my life because I don't have to stuff my head with all these things that I need to remember. Really, really useful. So then I schedule different days for different pen names for doing some social media and blogging and things. And so I just click on KeePass, open the different URLs, copy in the passwords. I can usually remember the username but never the password. Really, really useful. Evernote is a, another wonderful 
piece of software that uh, everybody who's used it tends to rave over. It's a desktop software so you can open you can go to the site and use it on your desktop but there are lots of things to download as well i have an iphone and an ipad so i have the evernote apps on those and whatever i've added on the computer i can find on the app and vice versa really really useful so sometimes when you're out and about commuting or queuing in line somewhere you might be browsing on the internet and find something useful perhaps a piece of research that you want to save for a, for a future book you can clip that and save it in Evernote and then later on when you're at your, your laptop or your computer you can bring it up again and it's so so useful so you can save lots of things not just websites you can put photos in there you can add notes and to-do lists and I find it very useful for scanning in things so I might get something through the mail and I can scan it into Evernote and retrieve it whenever I want to later. So it's just another thing for making life a bit easier and stopping you needing to remember lots of stuff because you can access it easily. I tend to create an, a different notebook in Evernote for each pen name and then I save things, different ideas, source materials. Lots and lots of different things come to mind when you actually start doing this sort of thing. Really, really useful. The mobile app, if you have a smartphone or a tablet, you can download apps for most of the social media sites that you will go to, including Goodreads and other things like that. And it's great for using time that would otherwise not be usable for working or for researching. So you can send out a quick tweet when you're on the go, or you could actually access something like Hootsuite, which is a thing that you can use to access several social media accounts. And I find that really useful when I'm traveling. So if somebody is driving me and they don't want to talk, I can access Hootsuite and schedule some posts. So the mobile app's tremendously useful for saving time. And you will generally have your pen names and your logons. You will generally have your logons and passwords saved in there. They will allow you to have multiple ones. Another thing I use on my computer, I have one computer that where I do most of my work and I have a laptop as well and I do the same thing. I have different browsers where I've gone to the different sites that I use, so the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and all that kind of thing, and I've told it yes when it wants to save my details, when it wants to save the username and password. So. I use Firefox with my main name, with my real name. I use Internet Explorer and I don't use Chrome, I don't like it. I use Safari. So I have my three different pen names with three different browsers. And then I generally bookmark the sites I go to most often and tell them to save my login and password. Really, really useful. We're going to look at a few tips finally for making life a bit easier and clearing some of the clutter from our brains. The first thing is to plan your week. So on a Monday, I do my work on my first name. So I do social media updates. I'll do a little bit of blogging. I might send out some requests for reviews or for some appeals to ask people to have me on the podcast or blog. And on Tuesday, I do it all again, but with a different name. And that's what works best for me. And I've spoken to a few authors and that works really well for them. Signing up for Google Alerts is always a terrific idea. They're so useful. So you can set up alerts for each of your pen names, for each of your books, perhaps topics that you write on or series, genres, things that might trigger ideas for you in the future and that will send you alerts to let you know when those things have been mentioned online. So it's great to be able to keep an eye on when you're being mentioned and often you can find things that you can respond to. So perhaps there'll be a story in the in the news that is in within your area of expertise. You could write a quick press release about that and, and get that out. Or you could ring a local reporter and offer them a comment on a story that they have run. They might want to go a bit further with it. So Google Alerts are very, very useful. A couple of things to be aware of. As I mentioned earlier, you can't have more than one Facebook account, so do be careful with that. But you can with most of the other platforms. Just keep an eye on their terms of service because that might change. Do be careful with LinkedIn. It's it's a it's more formal and they tend to send out nagging letters, nagging messages much more frequently than the other platforms. So try to be very, very professional on LinkedIn. That's what they're aiming for and that's why they get cross with people who are ever so slightly spammy or who have a jokey photo for their profile picture. So it's probably 
best to stick to your real or your primary pen name. And if you want to be transparent about your other names, you could list them on your profile. LinkedIn is very, very powerful in terms of SEO. So it's a really good idea to have a presence on there. I mentioned transparency a moment ago and you know, I, I jokingly said, unless you're in the witness protection program, but there might be lots of reasons why you don't want to be completely transparent about your pen names. And that's fine. Lots of authors aren't, don't tell anybody about different pen names that they write under. So don't worry too much about that. Just be careful that you're not in an account under one name and writing about something that you, you write under and another name. So if you're going to be transparent, be transparent on every platform that you're on. And if not, just be careful that you're not logged into the wrong account. Once you've set up a presence on the major social media and book cataloging sites, you have your profile there. You don't have to visit them every day. You could just choose one or maybe two to focus on and, and put regular updates. But your profile on the others will remain and that will help your SEO boost your website and it will give you so, so, social proof. So if reporters Google to look for an expert on whatever your field of expertise is, if you have lots of presence online in lots of different areas, the chances of you coming to their attention are much higher than if you only had one website and didn't put yourself on any platforms. So just having a presence saying, this is me, even if you don't update the sites is, is worth having, well worth having. And then perhaps every time you visit a book, you could, you could go back to them to update and say that you've published a book and, and add it to your list of books. LinkedIn has a very good space for adding publications. That was me with my advice from my experience of juggling three pen names. Please feel free to comment and add any advice that you have because we're all here to learn from each other. Thanks for watching.